me know where you're tuning in from today. see you're all letting me know where you're tuning in from. It's fantastic to see everyone. We're going to be talking about some interesting scales today, some that you might know better than others, some pentatonic scales. And then we're going to be talking about some that aren't talked about as much, which are hexatonic scales. So while you're at it, make sure to hit like if you could hit that like button. That would be fantastic. So we can push this out to even more people and help growing my little YouTube channel here. And it's fantastic to see where all of you are tuning in from. I'm going to get stuck into the chat in a minute and say hi to all of you, but uh, let me just play for you a little bit more while everyone shows up. But it's fantastic to see you all and can't wait to get started and say hi to our moderator Vienna if you haven't already. Thank you. 
So today we're going to be talking about pentatonic scales and hexatonic scales. And uh, before we jump into it any further, I, I should let you know that uh, today and tomorrow we're doing the last two days of 20% off everything at bensguitarclub.com. So you can use the code SEPT, S-E-P-T, 2023 to get 20% off everything, including my individual guitar masterclasses and my bundle packages, uh, including everything, how to practice bundle, modern soloing bundle, you name it, you can get it for 20% off, ends tomorrow. So make sure to check it out. Uh, and also, by the way, I am doing one-on-one -on -one lessons in September. A lot of people have asked me to continue doing this in September. So next weekend and the weekend after, I have a limited amount of spaces for one-on-one -on -one lessons. So make sure you join me. No matter where you are in the world, we can schedule a Zoom lesson. And the link is down in the description below. So make sure to check it out. So hey, Matthias, wonderful to see you uh, from uh, Halifax. Great to see you, Moro. Hey, Pablo from Texas. Great to see you. I might be a uh, from Spain. Is it Jean? I might be pronouncing your name incorrectly. I apologize, but um, lovely to see you, um, Javier. Wonderful to see you too, Kenneth. TJ, great to see you all. This is fantastic. I'm so glad you uh, are here. Uh, RV Music TV, wonderful to see you all. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about uh, pentatonic scales and hexatonic scales. And uh, let me see. I think the pentatonic scale is kind of the most important scale on guitar. And the reason why I say this is because uh, the guitar is essentially tuned to a pentatonic scale. E minor. An E minor pentatonic scale has the notes E, G, A, B, and D. And of course, penta is derived from the Greek for five, so it's a five note scale. E, G, A, B, and D. And of course, the open strings of the guitar are no different. E, G, A, B, D, and high E in a slightly different order there. It's a little bit out of order, but same thing, E minor pentatonic scale. So aside from the fact that uh, the E minor pentatonic scale is probably the most ubiquitous scale in, in the last hundred years or thereabouts of electric guitar. Uh, it is also what the guitar is tuned to. So we may have heard all the classic uh, blues licks and... But it's no coincidence that those are the most uh, commonly occurring sounds on guitar because it's essentially what the guitar is tuned to. We've got a whole lot of other people tuning in here as well, which is fantastic. It's wonderful to see you all. Uh, Peter, wonderful to see you. Kenji, Richard, Mosin, Igor, uh, lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep letting me know where you're tuning in from. Jump in the chat. We're going to talk about pentatonics and hexatonics. Well, I'm going to talk about it, and then I'd love for us to all talk about it. So make sure you stick around. Now, basically, yeah, we're starting off with the E minor pentatonic scale, and it works over an E minor chord. <laughs> So we've all more or less heard that sound, I think. But what if we were to take some other pentatonic choices that might also work over this E minor sound? And perhaps rather than just doing a basic E minor chord sound, let's make it a little bit prettier with this voicing, which I really like. We've got the, uh, the ninth in there, the F sharp, and the seventh. And what we can do is, instead of just doing your straight up E minor pentatonic scale, 
let's instead try a different option, which would be the B minor pentatonic scale. All the while playing over an E minor chord. which I really love because that gives us the notes B, which is the fifth over E, the D, which is the uh, flat seven over E, the E, which is the root note E over an E bass note, the F sharp, which is the nine over E, and the A, which is the 11, which I really love. And I go into this in a lot of depth in my masterclass, How to Solo with the Pentatonic Scale, where I give you a lot of examples uh, in terms of uh, how you can utilize other scales over a basic sort of E minor sound or an E major sound. We can sort of repurpose, if you will, certain pentatonic scales to work over a set chord, much like what we're doing here. And I think that uh, B minor pentatonic is one of my favorites for that reason. You get the beautiful 11 sound over the E minor chord. The beautiful 9 sound. The beautiful 7 sound. Wow, C sharp's not in there, but I was getting a little bit creative. favorite sounds, B minor pentatonic scale over an E minor chord. Now we can take this one step further with making it even less overt but a bit more open sounding over an E minor chord as well by using another minor pentatonic scale which we're going to superimpose. And, and by the way, if you have any questions or any observations, make sure to jump in the chat right now. But yeah, E minor sound. And we're going to play an F sharp minor pentatonic scale, F sharp. And the notes are going to be F sharp, which is the 9 over E, A, which is the 11 over E, B, which is the 5th over E, C sharp, which is the natural 13 over E, and E, which is the root note. Now this one's really interesting to me and I talk about this in my How to Solo with the Pentatonic Scale uh, Guitar Masterclass as well because it doesn't contain uh, the minor third G. And for that matter, nor does the B minor pentatonic scale. But nonetheless, there's something about it that is very moody, moody, pardon me, and impressionistic, I think. Because of some of those beautiful chord tones that you can hear over any minor sound. The 13, C sharp. The 13, the 11, and of course the 9 F sharp. Which are all beautiful sounds. So I love doing all of those things over an E minor chord, taking the minor pentatonic scale and uh, making sure that I can 
utilize other pentatonics over, say, an E minor chord. And we can also do this with major sounds. If we instead take an E major sound and start looking at the E major pentatonic scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, B, and C sharp. That's the E major pentatonic scale, and it's really exactly the same as the uh, C-sharp minor pentatonic scale. Basically what we can do is we say, well, we know that works, and it's a pretty clear sound. E major pentatonic scale over an E major chord. What if we were to make it a little bit more interesting by playing a G-sharp minor pentatonic scale over this same chord? G sharp, which is the major third degree over E. B, which is the fifth over E. C sharp, which is the sixth or thirteenth over E. D sharp, which is the major seventh over E, which is a really big win if you ask me, especially including the next note, F sharp, which is the major nine, natural nine or major nine. option there as well. So we talk about all of these in my pentatonic masterclass at bensguitarclub.com and you can of course get 20% uh, off with the code SEPTSEPT2023 which is in the chat in the description. Now let's continue with some uh, hexatonic scales. Now before I go on let's jump in the chat here and see what you uh, have jumped in the chat and said hand solo, I'd like to get that Laney. Yes, I'm using the Laney LE Studio and I'm loving the sounds out of it, it's great. Um, let's see, all these pentatonics can be used only if E minor is implied to be Dorian? That's a good question, Moro. I think it uh, definitely implies over the E minor chord a Dorian sound because both of those uh, options, well, more so the F sharp minor pentatonic scale option does imply a Dorian sound because of the no the presence rather of the C sharp. C sharp is the uh, natural 13 or the natural 6 and that is certainly present in the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so that does imply a Dorian type sound. You're quite right. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. So let's continue on with some uh, hexatonic scales. And instead of doing it over E major this time, let's move to something a little different, which would be a C major sound. Now the C major sound that I'm looking at here is going to be sort of a C Lydian mode type sound. And if you're unfamiliar with the C Lydian mode, it's a scale or mode that sounds a little bit like this over C major. And uh, for the sake of reference, it's the fourth mode of the G major scale. But what we're going to do here is explore hexatonic scales a little bit. Hexa is derived from the Greek for six, much like penta was derived from the Greek for five. So hexa is of course a six note scale. 
And hexatonic scales are typically, because they are six note scales, they can be divided into two groups of three notes. And two groups of three notes means two triads. So for example, we could take a C major triad, C, E, G, and a D major triad, D, F sharp, A. And we'd have what was called a triad pair. And basically when you have a triad pair like that, you can take the six notes involved in those two triads and form a scale out of those notes. So for example, we would have out of those two triads, we would have a scale that is hexatonic and sounds like this. And to me, because it is no, uh, it's not a uh, Lydian mode as such, to me it almost has this openness to it because it doesn't explicitly state that B natural, which is the major seven over C. That's a great place to start with a hexatonic scale, for example, two triads. And turning those two triads into a scale. And we can do the same thing, for example, with the uh, augmented triads, a B augmented triad. B, D sharp, G, and C, E, G sharp. B augmented triad, C augmented triad, very interesting sound. Let me know if that's a sound that you've used before, these types of augmented triads while you're soloing. beautiful. And basically what we can do is we can also turn those augmented triads into a uh, hexatonic scale, you guessed it. Because all of those notes, C, E and G sharp are the C augmented triad, and D sharp G and B are the B augmented triad. Beautiful sound, one of my favorites. So these are all, I think, a really cool collection of scales that you can try and get under your fingers and try and get used to the sounds of that can really expand your uh, vocabulary on the guitar neck. It gives you a greater range of things that you can access in terms of uh, scales and uh, subsequently materials that you can use to expand your soloing on the guitar. So why don't you let me know if you have any questions about all of this and we can certainly get into it. And uh, of course all of those hexatonic examples are available in my guitar masterclass, how to solo with triad pairs or rather how to play triad pairs and hexatonic scales, which you can also get at bensguitarclub.com. So let me know if you have any questions. Either about what we've been talking about today or anything else that you want to ask me.
And also make sure to give the live a thumbs up today, a like. Make sure you like it so we can push it out to more people. And if you do want to take a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, which I'm not going to be offering for too much longer just because of uh, scheduling, but uh, for the next two weekends, I've opened up some slots which you can uh, book your place at benyunson.com uh, in the link down in the description below for the next two weekends, the 16th and 17th of September, and I believe it's the uh, 23rd and 24th. So make sure to check that out if you'd like to take a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. So here we go with some questions. Hey, Kenneth, um, can I treat uh, six chromatic notes as a hexatonic scale? Well, yes, you could. I mean, uh, a hexatonic scale uh, is not by definition only triad pair based. And the same goes with a pentatonic scale. For example, a pentatonic scale does not uh, definitively have to take the uh, standard intervallic pattern of the minor pentatonic scale. And I'll get back to you on the uh, hexatonic scale in a moment. For example, a pentatonic scale that a lot of people like to use sometimes in improvised music is, for example, these five notes. It's kind of like a pattern. It's somewhere between a pattern, an arpeggio, and a scale. Maybe it's all three of those things. And basically what that means is, well, it's an E7 arpeggio. E7, E, G sharp, B, and D. And just throwing in an extra note, an F sharp. E, F sharp, G sharp, B, and D. And you could certainly call that a pentatonic scale. So I don't think that uh, it definitely, definitively rather, has to be one of the traditional patterns that we're talking about here. A hexatonic scale, similarly, well, maybe it could be a collection of uh, six. It could be a collection of six chromatic notes. Um, I think a lot of that uh, sort of uh, requires the musical context in which you'd like to utilize it as well. So, yeah, I would say that uh, not common, but you could certainly do that. So, yeah. What else do we have here? Pablo. Um, this looks like a great tool to improvise over static uh, chords. You'll get new colors uh, not available before. Absolutely, I agree. You'll be able to do those things over static chords. Uh, with the pentatonic scale and the hexatonic scale, you'll be able to utilize uh, some of those scales to try and get a lot more out of yeah, certain static chords, like an E major sound, which we had before. Nice E major voicing there. certainly use it for all that kind of stuff and it also uh, can be connected up with other language as well so that it's not just purely pentatonic which can be um, well you know it can just be a little boring if you only stick to the pentatonic but um, yeah you can connect it up with other things as well <laughs> up with anything you like so yeah certainly I agree Pablo that's um, great stuff Moro uh, C and D major triads come from the uh, D major scale um, so the C and the D major triads uh, come more so from the G major scale uh, which essentially was what I was alluding to with the sort of C Lydian reference earlier that it's a little like C Lydian mode that particular hexatonic scale and the C triad is the fourth triad in G major and the D triad is the fifth triad in G major which theoretically explains why that's kind of a Lydian sound to pair those two triads Um, now, as for the uh, augmented triads, uh, this is an example where hexatonic scales don't have to sort of 
adhere to any kind of diatonic rules as such. Uh, hexatonic scales certainly don't have to adhere to any diatonically related rules. It's just an interesting coincidence that the C and D triads are rather similar to, um, to a C Lydian mode, which of course is a very diatonic example. So yeah, the B augmented triad, it's really just two triads that are right next to each other that sound pretty cool when you turn them into a scale. It's, it's really as simple as that. Not to mention the intervallic pattern that occurs when you do blend those two triads. Minor third, half step. Minor third, half step. Minor third, half step. Great sound. So yeah, whether you want to view a hexatonic scale with some sort of diatonic association or not, uh, it sort of uh, depends on the hexatonic scale in question. But um, I suppose theoretically it could be any two sets of three notes that could form a hexatonic scale. It doesn't have to have a diatonic connection. So there you go. Let me know if you have any other questions. And certainly, uh, if you've just tuned in, make sure to remember that you can get 20% off everything at bensguitarclub.com today and ending tomorrow with the code SEPT2023, S-E-P-T 2023. And uh, that includes my individual guitar masterclasses and, of course, my bundle packages. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me in September, we have a few spots next weekend and the weekend after. Thank you so much to uh, thank you so much for joining in today, Manuel. I really appreciate all of you tuning in today. I, it's just fantastic. Uh, perhaps we'll leave it here for today, but it's been really uh, a lot of fun sharing this information with you. And uh, yeah, always great fun to see you here on the live stream. And um, I hope that you find this information useful and. Uh, yeah, it's always great to talk about it. So I'll uh, be seeing you very soon, I hope, here on the live stream. And make sure to let me know if there are any particular topics that you'd like me to discuss. Anything to do with uh, listening to music, guitar, music theory, anything you like. But uh, yeah, it's been a real blast hanging out with you all today on here. And uh, make sure to hit like if you haven't already so that we can push this out to even more people. And make sure to check out the 20% off at Ben's Guitar Club, which is in the description, which ends tomorrow. So thank you again, everyone. This has been a real blast. And uh, I'll see you very soon with some more videos coming up, some more playing videos, uh, some more of everything. So absolutely. Thanks, everyone. And uh, I'll see you very soon. See you later.